Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast. I'm John Cook, and I'm joined today by Takahiro Sakito, Chief Japan Strategist for MUFG. It's Monday, April 18th, 2022. Welcome back to the podcast, Sakito-san. Good to be back. It's really good to have you. Um, why don't we do things a little bit differently here? I'd like to start the episode off in the polit- political arena. Um, more specifically, I'm curious what our listeners should be watching out for from the Kishida administration, as well as any potential effects for markets. The Kishida administration is working quickly to push throughout economic measures to head off the effects of inflation out of the upper house election on July 10th. We are watching not only the response to inflation, but also the past COVID approach, as well as the fiscal risk management and details of regulatory and structural reforms. If the Kishida administration's new capitalism does not include notable measures related to improving the Japanese corporate sector's value, then we think Japan stocks will remain sluggish as yen weakens, which could negatively impact Japanese investors' demand for falling bonds and therefore tighten yen basis. Uh, interesting. So, without some uh, you know, structural reforms, I'm not sure if that's the right, right word, but you could see uh, you know demand for Japanese you know financial assets to to you know, to be constrained and, and obvious, an obvious effect on, you know, dollar yen there for sure. Um, you know, speaking of stocks, how would you characterize changes in attributes for Japan's stock market in recent years? And a little bit more specifically, how have these structural changes or how will these structural changes in Japan's stock market impact other financial markets like cross-currency basis? During the early days of economics, Foreign investors expanded their investing flows into Japan stocks as BOJ bought ETFs. After 2016, when foreigners turned the net seller of Japan stocks, overseas investors' response to the ETF buying has been both positive and negative. The policy effect appears to have been unclear. The sensitivity of Japan stocks to the foreign, foreigners' Japan stock investing flows against the BOJ. EDF buying shows cl- clearly that EDF buying cannot be expected to support Japan stock prices at this point. Both overseas and the Japanese investors who plan to fold for the medium to long term will be focusing on the details of economic measures designed to improve Japanese corporate sectors value out of the past COVID era. If the BOJ bolster monetary easing policy, commits to ease curb control operations and expand EDF purchases in tandem with the Kishida administration's economic measures, the upward impact on Japan stocks could be limited. At the same time, recent trends points to down yen rising and yen basis widening yeah the the move in dollar yen has been incredible um and the you know the basis has you know in my view has some room to room to widen um mm-hmm. switching topics a bit uh the treasury the u.s treasury rather just released the february tick data um mm-hmm. always you know this and and the um you know international transaction and securities data from the ministry of finance always super interesting and insightful mm-hmm. in terms of helping us understand what you know both japanese investors are doing in overseas bond markets as well as what foreigners are doing in, in japanese bond markets let's dig into the february tick data a bit i'm curious how japanese investors reacted to the global global bond market sell-off that we really saw, you know, accelerate in February. Japanese investors appear to have been very busy through the end of March, unwinding across held uh, Japanese equity shares and taking a falling bond valuation losses. The Nikkei average failed to rise as investors took gains on Japan stocks and the sell-off of falling bonds accelerated the rise in U.S. yields. 
The valuation gains on Japanese investors' marketable securities portfolios are overwhelmingly from Japan stock positions. I expect Japanese investors to continue to sell Japan stocks and foreign bonds. According to the US tick data for February, released on April 15th, Japanese investors unloaded a net $5.9 billion of US treasuries, $611 million of US government agency bonds, and $3.1 billion of US stocks, but net bought $1.6 billion of US corporate bonds. In fiscal year 21, April 2021 to February 2022, Japanese have net bought 267 billion yen of Japanese uh, US sovereign medium to long term bonds and uh, 2 trillion yen of US non sovereign bonds, 55 billion dollar of US government agency bonds, and $8 billion of U.S. corporate bonds, while unloading $8 billion of U.S. treasuries. In a fiscal year 22, Japanese investors are likely to unload U.S. bonds when unloading their foreign bond holdings. In particular, if the Fed sells U.S. government agency bonds as part of quantitative tightening, then Japanese positions with U.S. government agency bonds will bear watching. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be inter- extremely interesting to see how Japan would react to uh, to any any more serious uh, runoff of the Fed's mortgage book. Um, but I think it's about time for us to wrap this up. I don't want to do that without um, without getting your view across you know various markets, spot dollar yen, yen rate, yen basis, etc. Um, so so why don't why don't you leave our listeners with that? Okay. When I ate with Latin the Branch managers of the Bank of Japan and the BOJ met and reviewed the Sakura report on regional economies as well as the March Tankan survey and agreed to downgrade the economic assessment of seven of Japan's nine regions. BOJ Governor Haruhiko closed the note on April 13th after the release of the US CPI data that he intends to maintain a monetary easing policy and a uh, now again, topped the 126 mark. The BOJ stands out among the G10 central banks, including the Fed, for its relatively dovish policy stance. Comments by the US Fed leadership next week uh, could still mark it again, but the BOJ's fixed rate GGB buying operations appear to be clearly supporting the rise by Don Yen. But the yen is declining at a rapid pace, and the speed may be adjusted soon. We expect Don Yen to trade within a 3 yen range at a high range of 125 to 128 but change the bias from bullish to neutral. The yen swap rate curve has risen, especially the belly. Upper stress on the yen rates is deep rooted. The long end of the JGB curve declined on April 14th after the 20 years JGB auction. But the 10 years JGB yield is still near the, the upper limit for yield curve control operation 0.25%. Over the near term, the BOJ could expand the scale of same-day JGB buying operations and announce a further fixed-rate JGB buying. Yen rates will maintain a neutral bias as long as the BOJ is controlling JGB yields. The yen basis curve has tightened for three months contracts, but widened for other durations. Ministry of Finance data for April 3rd to 9th showed that Japanese unloaded a net 1.1 trillion of overseas securities, while foreigners net bought 3.9 trillion yen of Japanese securities. Japanese investors net sold 1.1 trillion yen of overseas stocks and investment fund holdings, 
1.4 billion yen of medium to long term bonds and 28 billion yen of short term bonds. Japanese investors continued the straight unloading of foreign bonds of the week before, quitting their investment funds. If there was a shift from foreign stocks to foreign bonds, we think they continued to unload foreign bonds with some differences by sector. Over the same week, holdings net bought 1.6 trillion yen of Japanese stocks and investment fund holdings, 1.3 trillion yen of short-term bonds, and 873 billion yen of medium to long-term bonds. Overseas investors have been net buyers of Japan stocks for two straight weeks. And we will be watching if their appetite for Japan stocks is sustained. Overseas investors have been quickly rebuilding their JGB portfolios after the March JGB redemptions. It is unclear if Japanese investors are done unloading their overseas assets. There may be a need to adjust investment positions further. There will be more PDB auctions over the near term. Overseas investors will likely be drawn to arbitrage appeal of the front end of yen basis. We expect the yen basis to maintain a neutral bias. Okay, so neutral across spot dollar yen rates and uh, and and basis, but for very different reasons. Dollar yen obviously consolidating after some big moves. You know, as you say, um, you know, J JPY rate unlikely to change with the BOJ mm -hmm. actively, you know, controlling the curve, um, and then right. you know some pretty interesting cross border flows, um, you know, affecting affecting the basis here. You know, as you as you say, there's there appears to be a bit of. Uh, change in behavior from overseas investors now that they've been buying, uh, you know, for for two weeks in a row. So a lot, a lot there to uh, to to digest. Um, you know, so uh, great stuff as always. Extremely excited, extremely insightful. Thanks again for joining us, Sikido san Thank you so much. Uh, always uh, this uh, the reading, uh, the recording. Thank you, John. Yep, my pleasure. And thank you for listening to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast rate, review, and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And reach out to your MFG sales rep for any further information. Check back soon for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.